All right, well, let's get started. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us this morning um, for this session, creating a robust life sciences strategy uh, with best practice sharing between Denmark, Ontario, and Quebec. Um, this is actually a bit of a kickoff event for our annual policy forum, now our Ideas to Action Forum, that will be taking place on November 3rd. Um, I'd like to start things off by um, uh, just saying a quick thank you to our colleagues at the Danish Life, Life Sciences Forum that help us uh, pull this together. Um, and I would also like to um, say a quick acknowledgement uh, for the land um, from which we're, we're coming to you from. I'm actually located today in Mississauga. Um, and it is the traditional territory of many nations, wow. including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. I also acknowledge that Ontario is covered by Treaty 13, signed with the Mississaugas of the Credit, and the Williams Treaties, signed with multiple Mississaugas and Chippewa bands. So just a little bit of housekeeping uh, before we start. Um, it's just a reminder that uh, if you have a question as we're uh, presenting, please um, submit your questions in the Q&A area and we will try to get to them uh, during the session. It is my pleasure today to introduce our three guests. Um, Christina Kibsgaard is the Chief Special Advisor with the Life Sciences Team at the Ministry of Industry, Business and Financial Affairs of Denmark. Uh, Christina just let me know that uh, they had a, a big announcement this morning. Um, there will be an election in Denmark on November 1st. So um, I think uh, she's going to be going into the caretaker mode that we've uh, experienced as well during uh, uh, pre-election cycles. Um, we also have joining us um, my, my good friend, Frank Burrow, President and CEO of Montreal in Vivo, and another good friend of mine, Andrew Guy, um, a former colleague, uh, and he's the director uh, in the Advanced Technologies Branch at the Ontario Ministry of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. So we're going to kick things off. Christina has a short presentation um, to, uh, to share with us, and then we'll open it up to a panel discussion. So, Christina, over to you. Thank you so much. I'm trying to share my screen. Screen, just give me one second. You're on mute, Christina. You're on mute, Christina. Do you hear me now? Hmm? Yes. Okay, let's try this one. Okay. Okay. I've been asked to say a few words about the Danish experience of development, developing the Danish life science sector through a strategic, strategic develop, uh, approach. But first, let me begin to explain to you the reason why I'm presenting today. At the Ministry of Industry, Business and Financial Affairs, we are looking to, on how we can strengthen our opportunities to growth and employment throughout Denmark, and especially for the life science area. 
Uh, and for that purpose, we have been we have established an uh, office dedicated to the framework conditions uh, for the life science sector. Our office have, have an ongoing dialogue with the industry in order to respond quickly to techn technological business models, market conditions, and all that could uh, create a strong foundation for public-private partnerships. And today, I want to touch upon uh, three themes. Um, how we work in uh, life science in Denmark, how the economic impact and future scenarios uh, we see develop in front of us, our life science strategy, uh, which is our current strategy going through uh, 2023, some key elements I have chosen today, and then I want to touch upon private-public partnerships, <clears throat> where we try to stand together to develop things life science uh, uh, the Danish life science industry for the benefit of both patient care and economic growth. Um, <clears throat> first, I want to use a couple of minutes to tell you about Denmark as a life science nation. And we use this term a lot. But just to clarify, so when we mean life science, that is med uh, medical, biotech, and pharma. And maybe you know four of our biggest life science companies, <clears throat> which are foundation based, it is Novo Nordisk. Leo Pharma, Lundbeck, and Coloplast. Um, but you can see by the, by the picture I've shown you right now that the life science sector is represented by both global leaders uh, and also minor um, uh, biotech companies. It's also important to mention the strong life science foundations in Denmark. The, founda the, the foundations need to have a non-selfish purpose and the donations are long-term investments that made a huge difference for the Danish society, especially within research and science. So <clears throat> why are we so uh, dedicated for the, uh, developing the life science area in Denmark? Well, the economic uh, footprint is major. Uh, the life science industry goods export, uh, goods export have risen sharply over just a few years. And uh, now the recent uh, numbers I have is from 2020 and over uh, 157 billion Dings crowns. That is equal to um, almost 20% of all Dings goods, good exports. And also I want to enhance uh, the life science industry's uh, major um, uh, footprint on our R&D. So the life science industry invests 13.9 billion Danish crowns in R&D. That is almost 6% of the turnover in the industry. In comparison with the rest of the Danish companies, the, the general sector, um, they only spend approximately 1% of the turnover in R&D. Um, so, how would it look if, uh, how are the future growth uh, rates scenarios for the Danish life science industry? Uh, today, I've, uh, um, I've taken uh, at this short graph, uh, and some of the words are in Danish, but I hope you can understand, uh, even just uh, taking a glance at the, at the graph. Um, and in 2019, there was conducted an, an, an an analysis uh, of the possible positive gains of investing in the life science sector. Overall, there are very good opportunities, and that's due to, for instance, more elderly, growing middle class, and increase in numbers of uh, citizens with lifestyle and chronic diseases. There is conducted a high growth, that's the blue line, uh, scenario, um, and a uh, low growth or that's just still a growth uh, scenario that's the gray line and on this uh, at this point we are somewhere in between the two curves and the difference of the 158 million that is the, the difference in good in goods export so right now we are somewhere in between the two curves however some of the biggest pharma companies in Denmark are performing very, very well and thus we are pretty um, <clears throat> Uh, optimistic about the high growth scenario. So what's needed? 
while investments in ground research, excellent patient treatment through uh, development and implementation of innovative and digital, digital solutions, more digitalization, better access to health data, global health diplomacy, and green solutions. That is what is needed and many more things. So now I want to jump to the <clears throat> second theme of my presentation. And our life science strategy um, was announced uh, and was due to, uh, uh, after a political agreement in May 2021. And um, <clears throat> I want to I want you to use a couple of minutes to tell you about how we actually developed the strategy as the strategy, because it says a lot about how we work with life science here in Denmark. Uh, and that is a foundation of a strong and trust trustful uh, um, partnership with the private industry uh, and the government. Um, so it started out in 2020 with some climate uh, partnerships for life science and biotech, uh, which was the hot topic at this point. And then during the Corona crisis, we had uh, the government uh, was uh, elected some uh, areas for a restart. That's a restart growth uh, team for, for instance, life science and biotech. And the two partnerships, the partnership and the team came with some long term recommendations. And then we had uh, ongoing dialogue with the life science industry with workshops, iLattery, et cetera, also with our minister of um, uh, our, our Minister of Industry, Business and Financial Affairs, uh, leading all the dialogue. And then we also, of course, had an iteration of the initiatives in the National Growth Strategy. That's our first life science strategy from 2018. So in the strategy, we had seven uh, focus area and 37 initiatives. I, of course, I don't want to uh, bore you with all the initiatives as you have a life science strategy, but I just want to touch upon some of the uh, areas where we have uh, an imp where the public pri private partnerships, with this, which is core of how we work with life science here in Denmark, where we have concrete initiatives that actually support that way of working together. One of the initiatives is better use of health data. And health data, of course, is sorry. Uh, health data is, of course, uh, a key element when in research and development. And what we did was established a national partnership for better use of health data for research, quality development, and innovation. Uh, the partnership uh, is uh, uh, the representation in the partnership is both industry uh, associations patients organization and also Ministry of Health and Ministry of and my ministry Ministry of Industry, Business and Financial Affairs. And they have to come with recommendations uh, later this year uh, for how we can um, make better access to healthcare data. And, and also uh, we have other initiatives in the life science strategy, more concrete, how to make which is finance a data map where uh, what what do we have of uh, accessible data in Denmark how can uh, we offer guidance because there is a diff uh, there's different uh, data folders and how can we have one common application portal that's some of the uh, requests from the life science as, um, industry and also, I want to touch upon the strength of global health diplomacy to promote export. And actually, Canada, of course, is one of the areas where we have decided to have life science uh, attaches. Um, and that is because of that. Uh, what I mentioned in the beginning, that export is a very large part of the uh, economic impact um, of the life science sector in Denmark. And of course, that is because we have such a uh, relatively, relatively uh, small home market. It is important to have a well-functioning home market to serve as, an, uh, as a good example, um, but the export is of course of utmost importance for our life science companies. 
One of the last um, <clears throat> uh, initiatives I want to touch upon is the establishment of a National Life Science Council. Um, the Life Science Council was uh, actually uh, founded to be uh, for being a motor of the life science, the partnership between the government and also life science industry, patient organization, branch organization, and so on, to have one point that could develop uh, the coming uh, the initiatives for the coming year years. Um, the Life Science Council brings stakeholders from uh, all the um, both ministries and associations together, and also companies, both medtech, pharma, and so on. And the aim of the council is to identify ways and areas where a close part public partnership will benefit both patients, patients, growth, and the healthcare system. So in the government, uh, we will harvest the good ideas uh, for further development of the sector. So when implementing the life science strategy, uh, some of the early learnings that we have um, is that organizational structure is key. That is, for instance, uh, the office where I uh, work, which is the go-to point for uh, the industry, uh, but it's also uh, us who is in head of implementing, uh, there is head of implementing the strategy for life science, even though that many initiatives is actually on other, um, uh, is um, in, on other ministries uh, affairs. Also inclusiveness and dialogue, I hope that from my presentation, you can see that that is actually key to where uh, we can have, uh, we can work um, together with our industry in, uh, in a, on a foundation built of trust. Um, and also, I think we do have a common um, ambition that is throughout the ministries, but also uh, from the industry's uh, point of view, an ambition and willingness to see life science and health as two equal sides of the coin. And by that, I mean that public-private partnerships are key how to overcome the uh, the um, the demographic demographic um, and development, more elderly, higher expectation of healthcare, and all the trends that all the mega trends that we are seeing in front of us. Ambition, uh, and lastly, the ambition to think life science as an essential cornerstone of our wealth wealth welfare, welfare system. That is, for instance, that we want to. Uh, bring life science uh, solutions developed in both, uh, both the private side, but also in private public partnerships to be uh, a key and a source of answers when we have uh, for our welfare system, especially the healthcare system, of course. So we want to use the innovation power that the private uh, industry has and apply it to the public sector, because you know the healthcare sector in Denmark is public. So now uh, um, I want to touch upon the public-private partnerships. I want I had uh, I have touched upon it uh, uh, already in my presentation, but I want to show you the latest um, initiative from a public-private partnership, and that is the regional development initiative. Uh, of Lighthouse Life Science. A large number of public and private partners, uh, actors have joined forces to develop new solutions uh, through innovative partnerships. It includes regions, municipalities, pension companies, universities, and large and small and medium sized companies. One of the project's focus is development of new healthcare solutions in life science to uh, protect, uh, prevent, detect, and, and treat obesity. Obesity is to be chosen as a pilot because obesity is one of the most significant risk uh, factors for development of chronic diseases. Um, the government has funded uh, almost one, uh, 800 million Danish crowns uh, for projects under this public-private partnerships. And now I want to just show you a two-minute video of uh, how the lighthouse um, 
Lighthouse Life Science Ascent Facility. Give me one second. So. Denmark should be a lighthouse for life science and healthcare solutions. Nationally, the Danish government has allocated 1 billion Danish kroner for distribution among regional growth teams, including the capital region of Denmark, where public and private sector stakeholders will jointly develop new technological solutions to promote public health. This will be achieved through innovative partnerships between Denmark's regions, municipalities, pension companies, scientific institutions and small and medium-sized enterprises. These projects will help Danes to live healthier lives while creating jobs, economic growth and helping entrepreneurs and companies operating in the field of health technology along their way. Its background is recommendations from the capital region of Denmark's growth team, which has members from the business community, trade unions, regions and municipalities, as well as partnerships between various public and private sector stakeholders and pensions companies. The long-term aim is that these new health solutions should spread into all of Denmark and other health and healthcare areas, such as the elderly or psychiatry, and ultimately to the rest of the world, so Denmark is seen by other countries as a lighthouse beacon of healthcare technology. The project's initial focus is on obesity, which is one of the biggest risk factors for the development of a wide range of chronic diseases, such as type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. From 2010 to 2017, the number of Danes whose weight falls into the obese category increased from 13.6 to 16.8%. This corresponds to 800,000 Danes. This has serious consequences for the individual and entails major costs for society, both for the treatment of obesity and associated morbidities, but also because many people fall out of the labour market. Therefore, pilot projects in six areas aim to prevent, detect and treat obesity through the development of new technological health solutions. Some of the ways the project hopes to achieve this include using gamification to prevent obesity among school children, using health technology to inspire people to live healthier lifestyles, finding more people who are at risk of obesity, helping people who are obese with health checks and advice. Furthermore, research projects will attempt to help unemployed people who are obese to return to the labour market and contribute towards innovative, holistic and interdisciplinary treatments for obesity in a hospital. All this should help Denmark's capital city to become one of the world's leading health capitals. Find out more and join in at lighthouselifescience.com. Denmark should be a lighthouse for life. for me for this presentation from my side so thank you so much for listening thank you so much christina a wonderful presentation great overview of uh the ecosystem in denmark um we're now going to open up the uh the panel discussion and i will uh, i will be moderating this discussion again if you have any questions please drop them in the q a box uh within the uh the zoom window uh, Andrew, I wanted to go to you next. Um, and, you know, you and I have known each other for a very long time, longer than I'd like, like to admit. I won't date us. Uh, but we've also been talking about uh, an Ontario life sciences strategy for a very long time, and we now have one. So maybe you could give us a high level overview of the Ontario strategy and, and why now? For sure. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, and we have been talking about it for a long time, and, and this is Ontario's first public strategy in over 10 years. Um, and getting here was, was a long journey with many, uh, many, chain, many bumps in the road. Uh, but some of the, one of the, some of the key thing about getting here was that the community, the community was always a, an incredibly strong advocate for the sector. Um, and those voices were heard. And then I think timing finally came together. Uh, that, uh, but it was very important that the community was always a strong advocate. Life sciences has always been a priority sector for Ontario. 
but having a public strategy is a is a different way to approach it instead of just naming it as a priority sector it shows that you know action will come and and, and how we'll organize it so uh, that advocacy is really important and and before the pandemic the government was really considering a strategy they, they knew that 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 health and wealth went together and that they they wanted to figure out a way to do that together and in some ways the uh, the pandemic both accelerated and paused the getting a strategy out there right because we we all went into we all went into the community the government uh, the industry all went into a, a reactionary mode where we had to do things right and but a lot of learnings came out of that and i think so you know in some ways the strategy was talked about for a long time and then informed by the pandemic saying like, this is something we absolutely have to do. And then some of the elements really respond to it, but it, it, it created the, in some ways, uh, uh, the ultimate burning platform that you don't want, right? To, uh, to do it, but it really put a spotlight on it. And some of the key things uh, that sort of in, in the strategy that, uh, that are highlighted is that uh, Ontario realized and, and understand that it, it needs more manufacturing. Um, biomanufacturing is called out by, I'd say, all kinds of manufacturing. We saw it with PPE, but we also see it with uh, vaccines. So from, from the least complex to the most complex. So a real, a real commitment to, to growing that and to building our resilience in, in, in medical supplies as well. So at all ends of the spectrum, it's, uh, that, that is a real recognition. So that, those are two really key pillars of the strategy. The other one is, is, is that I think is, is, is is the is sort of really supporting the medium to, medium to long term vision is we really need to boost commercialization capacity here in Ontario, right? We uh, we have excellent research, but we have an opportunity to to grow more companies to a sustainable size, and that will take uh, better commercialization. Um, and and you know through that we have, we see a number of actions coming forward, including supporting small companies. Uh, supporting talent, especially we often hear that we don't have enough C-suite talent and, 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 and at the top end. Um, so th those are some of the key things that, that we're really focused on sort of that. And then the final piece is, is, is that, that, that adoption piece. You know, it's, uh, you know, we want companies to commercialize here in Ontario for the global market, because that's how you survive as, as a company, as a life sciences company. But we also, uh, we also need to see how our health system how our, uh, you know, how we can leverage things that we do in the province and we have some authority over, how we can leverage that to increasingly adopt innovation to improve healthcare. And, and then, and that sort of is, is a very, uh, one of the most difficult things that we'll have to tackle in the strategy. So it's really those four pillars about growing the manufacturing, building resiliency, um, you know, really improving our commercialization, um, and, uh, and, and then, and then adopting the things that, adopting the things that, 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 uh, that we commercialize here in Ontario. Thanks, Andrew. Um, next I want to, uh, to go to you, Frank, and, uh, and you and I have known each other for a long time as well, and, uh, it's good to have <laughs> you I, on board. I also heard that for a long time about the, well, uh, <laughs> the, the, that license strategy, so it was, uh, long awaited. <laughs> it, it certainly was. It certainly was. And, and you know, it's it's funny because uh, Ontario and Quebec, we, you know, we have been fierce competitors, but we've also been fierce collaborator, collaborators That's over right. uh, many years. And I think oftentimes in our discussions, the, the grass always seems a little greener on the other side at, uh, at certain times. Uh, Quebec was the first to launch a life sciences strategy, and you're now in your second iteration um, of your strategy. So can you tell us a little bit about the Quebec approach and some of the key elements of uh, this, this new revised life sciences strategy? Sure. Uh, first off, I just want to apologize if there is some background noise or some construction work in the streets so or trucks in the streets, so sorry about that. Um, well, to answer your question, Jason, you, you know, both in the first iteration and the second one, I think the approach was pretty much the same. In other words, it was a very inclusive approach. Uh, Christina mentioned that a bit uh, during her presentation, but I think having, uh, since, first of all, we have a licenses branch in, in the Ministry of Economy, and that's their mandate was to make sure that they consulted every uh, uh, important key stakeholders in the ecosystem. And, um, <clears throat> and that created a great momentum because pretty much all the different groups were involved in the creation of the strategy. So they worked that through, uh, I, would, I would call that a subject matter experts approach. So basically they created uh, some working groups, uh, five 
five themes over several months. And um, uh, each of the experts in, in those groups, they had a chance to propose some ideas on, on, on what should be included in the strategy. And all those groups, at the, at the, almost at the end of the process, had the chance to make a pre preliminary presentation to both ministers of economy and health. And they, we had a discussion with those two ministers to uh, fine tune the content of the strategy. But at the end, it was really the uh, life sciences branch that was in charge of writing basically the strategy. And they launched it during the Effervescence 2022 event, which is our event, uh, a, a big platform for in life sciences and was, I think, a very interesting uh, way of, of uh, getting a, a lot of noise around that, uh, that strategy. So the process itself was very inclusive, as I said. And um, I don't know if you, if you want me to go and, and, and touch upon the, the key elements of the, of the strategy. Yes, please. If you could just highlight some of the uh, yeah. some of the key because key um, I, I was just about to say that um, basically the the stakeholders did, were, were very happy with the the end results. Basically, uh, we felt that we've been heard. Um, so that, that's great because consultations are great, but if there is nothing in, in the final document of what you said, <laughs> I mean, it's a bit frustrating, but I wasn't, that was not the case. So basically the, the strategy itself is a $211 million over three years investment uh, with a, an objective of generating $4 billion of private investments. So of course the government doesn't do a strategy if they don't see a, a, an outcome you know, down the road. And that's, so the objective is very clear. So the strategy is articulated around five strategic priorities. And some are very similar uh, to what I heard before. And you know, when I said when I say synergies to address major health challenges, for instance, or develop human capital, or creation and growth of innovative companies, uh, attraction of investments, and commercialization of innovations. So these are the themes uh, or the strategic priorities. And altogether, they put together they, they propose ten measures. Uh, so basically two for each of the strategic priorities. And just to highlight a few, um, there is a strong emphasis on the support for you know, industrial innovation, clinical studies, um, uh, better access and use of health data. I saw that in Christina's presentation. So that's clearly a very, very important uh, thing. Um, hopefully that will uh, that will improve in the next few months with a new bill um, uh, at the provincial level that, that would help us on that. Um, you know, the, but you, um, Andrew, you mentioned biomanufacturing. That's very important for, for the strategy as well. But uh, there is a strong focus on the training of the right workforce for those biomanufacturing plants. Otherwise, I mean, it's it's there's no point of uh, you know attracting a new a new plant here in Quebec, and if we don't have anybody to to work in that plant, um, also uh, similar uh, international promotion very important as well. So uh, we don't use that lighthouse lighthouse beacon uh, uh, analogy, but I think we want to be also in Quebec uh, 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 at least a place that you know. Uh, foreign companies will uh, consider when making those investments. So these are the highlights of, of uh, the life sciences strategy. And as you said, Jason, this is the second iteration. Um, this is a strategy for three years. Uh, the first one wa was for five years. So I guess this is, um, uh, that's interesting because that gives us some kind of, uh, I would say, uh, flexibility. So we can be, uh, uh, I mean, the plan is for three years, but we know that uh, we'll we'll need to have another two years after that, and and we fine tune the different uh, metrics and the different objectives for the last yeah. two years. I, I think that's a really important point, uh, Frank. Uh, you know, this is a, a fast changing uh, sector, as we all know, and so uh, having these strategies being evergreened and and evolving over time is going to be very important. Um, Christina, um, I wanted to you know uh, see if you could talk a little bit about the implementation. As we all know, strategies are just pieces of paper unless they're actually implemented in a meaningful way. Can you tell us how Denmark was successful at the implementation stage? Um, what were some of the key challenges that you faced and uh, what advice could you share with us? 
Well, thank you, Jason, for that question. Uh, of course, uh, as the strategy uh, is uh, has a full year uh, in its, uh, so we're not coming to an end with all the initiatives. But I can, uh, from my point of view, you, some I want to share four uh, key elements of what uh, what I see as uh, a ground for success when implementing, and some of the things I've already um, uh, touched upon in my presentation. And that is, organization is key, and I mean internal organization. Uh, because, of course, um, uh, we work together with a lot of ministries, uh, Ministry of Health, Education, Facts, and also foreign, uh, foreign Affairs. And it is super important to have one ministry, uh, one, one minister, ministry in lead of this. And that is our task. Um, and also a go-to point. Because, uh, of course, there's a lot of, in a political system, there, there is a lot of uh, different uh, headlines that, you know, grab all the time you have. But we, as, we see ourselves as a motor for following up each time, each year, how does it go with implementation, follow up. That is uh, our, um, uh, our role in this. And also the Life Science Council, we have a report that they have to uh, um, uh, now, uh, they have to look upon as well. And that is also a good motor for uh, driving the implementation in a high gear. And of course, uh, you know, uh, um, trustful uh, uh, cooperation with other ministry and stakeholder engagement is also key for this. Uh, so that is what we work a lot about. Uh, work to, um, well, actually do uh, even better, but also, you know, uh, making our um, network uh, even, even bigger. I must say that tying together, uh, you know, the help, the in issues in the healthcare sector that we will see in the coming year, more elderly and, and, uh, and higher expectations of healthcare, tying that together with the solution and the inno innovative power that we do have in the uh, life science uh, industry in Denmark, that is also uh, met some uh, true political um, uh, true political uh, in, in acceptance. No, the linkage is really good uh, to uh, for us because we know uh, that with the innovative power uh, in the life science sector it is much higher, and there is an acceptance of that in Denmark uh, than in the uh, uh, public healthcare system. Uh, and the last thing is, of course, a more general thing: how, uh, um, what kind of society is Denmark? And of course, you know. We have a high level of, tr of trust and a political system that is in generally uh, that does operates with openness and transparency and that is of course a key for implementing as well um, and when we have uh, when we include private uh, companies early in the process and cooperate on developing solutions that is also uh, you know a mechanism that just um, spreads like uh, rings uh, in a positive sense uh, of course, there is also, you know, especially on the health data area, I must say it is super, uh, 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 it is super technical and also uh, difficult to give a good implementation that actually, uh, you know, corresponds with the um, um, the um, expectations that the life science industry has. And that is also uh, because of regulation in the European Union. Of course, I don't want to put a, a little, uh, put a lot of time on that. But of course, as a part of the European Union, there is some outer regulations that we are not in charge of. But uh, especially the access to healthcare is uh, actually an area that we struggle a lot with. So we try to find some solutions that is, you know, what we can have in a national way. That is guidance, uh, as I said earlier, and uh, kind of an overview where to access. Uh, all the, the data, uh, but what we would really like is that we had one point of entry, one point of access and applying, and that is difficult because there is, that will require an enormous, uh, enormous um, finance, uh, finan uh, financial resources and also a uh, new regulation on this area. And we must say that the area is not mature enough. Uh, we're working on this uh, now. It's our second life science strategy, and we feel like uh, the as years go past, then the matureness is higher and higher. 
So, but, but, but I must admit there is some areas that is more difficult than others being a health status being one of them. Thanks, Christina. I, you know, I had a chance to attend a session with um, the Danish Life Sciences Forum around health data not too long ago. And, you know, one of the things that really struck me was, you know, sometimes these are massive undertakings and life sciences uh, strategies in Denmark, Ontario, Quebec are, are no different. And sometimes focusing on, you know, starting small and then, you know, building off of that the lighthouse example of focusing on obesity is uh, is clearly one of those situations where you can look at something where there's general consensus and and then build uh, build upon that. Um, maybe I'll turn to uh, to uh, Andrew and Frank and ask you a similar question in terms of you know we are at the very early stages of implementation. Is there anything that you see from an Ontario Quebec um, uh, perspective that's sort of keeping you up at night in terms of implementation, and how do you think we can address uh, some of those challenges? Andrew, I'll start with you, and then go to Frank. Well, just want to pick up on something Christina said is like is, is about the coordination piece, and that that's really important, right? That that uh, that there's such a there's such a diversity of stakeholders. Um, you know, and and we're a subnational level of government as well, right? So we we have a, we have you know other levels of government. We have our industry organizations, of course, our companies, and and life sciences in Ontario is built with a lot of intermediary organizations that really support their uh, their technology areas uh, as well. So the the coordination is both the challenge and the opportunity to 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 bring it to a consensus. And you know, uh, the the government has committed to a phase two, which I think will be more complex. Um, and then that challenge just lends to, um, because there's both, uh, you know, a diversity of stakeholders and, and there's a diversity of kind of companies, right? And so I think the other challenge is what are the policy actions that a government can take, uh, a government can take to sort of, to both, to both be specific, to accelerate, but general enough that, that it picks up a lot of stakeholders and there, there's a lot of, a, you know, a lot of different people can, uh, can take advantage of them. And then the final thing is, is sort of the talent piece, right? And that's sort of the sort of building it while you're, while you're uh, doing it in that, in that uh, to, to accelerate uh, the life sciences here in Ontario and Canada, we need to continue to have the right talent to do it at all levels, right? So we need to both continue to produce the graduates, but also figure out ways through uh, immigration training and support and capital to sort of to get that to keep that top end talent sort of accelerating as well so that we can uh, build bigger and, and, and more complex uh, solutions. So um, it, it's a it's an exciting time, but uh, but I think that coordination is, is really key and and, um, and and a lot of the challenges we've been working on. And I think the other thing I, I pick up from Christina and when, when I when I you know look at the Danish system and things and, and the other thing is that trust factor, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the Danes often talk about it in a societal way. But just let's talk about it in our life sciences community. Let's we need to have trust amongst each other uh, so that we you know bring the right solutions forward and we have really honest conversations to to get those policy solutions. Thanks, Andrew. I I, I think you're uh, you're hitting a lot of the keynotes that uh, certainly within our community um, uh, we feel very similar about. So um, lots of opportunity there. Um, Frank, what about you? Anything keeping you up at night in terms of the implementation of the strategy? I would say pretty much the same things as uh, Christina and Andrew, because uh, coordination is key here. Uh, if we talk about talent, we need to have the right talent pool, right? But uh, the champion of the strategy is the Ministry of Economy, and, and they don't have any kind of, of uh, means to improve the, the training, for instance, the initial training of, of, of the workforce. So they need to coordinate with the Ministry of Education. And the same for integration of innovations. We can do and say whatever we want if the, the hospitals and the, the healthcare system doesn't make place for those innovations to, to, to land. I mean, that won't happen. So we need to have a, a, a strong coordination and, and discussions with the Ministry of Health. So that's clearly one uh, the, um, a very major factor for the implementation. Uh, maybe to add to that, I would say that the importance have of having metrics to follow, to follow progress is important. And because metrics means accountability, we can, we can follow if we're doing the right things and the person or organizations in charge of doing those things, they know what they have to do and they know that they, they, they will be measured against those, their objectives. And that is true. 
true not only for you know the, the public servants or the government uh, that have to put in place the different measures it's it is also uh, true for the whole ecosystem uh, companies they say okay we will support the strategy by invest by investing uh, that amount of money well in three years time we want to make sure that they did invest it. they did invest that amount of money so accountability is important so, and for that we need to, to follow the right metrics i think thanks uh, thanks frank i couldn't agree more i think measuring uh, outcomes is is absolutely key to, to implementation of any strategy uh, we had a question come in on uh, on the chat and this one's uh, to you andrew it's around health data and uh, you know we've heard um, frank and christina talk about um, uh, health data within the context of their strategies. And the question is, is health data, the better use of health data, um, uh, part of the Ontario strategy? It's not a specifically named part at this time, but, you know, as, as we start to think about, you know, uh, what's next and what we need to do, it's, it, it continues to be an acknowledged need. And it's something that the government continues to work on from its perspective about how we can continue to help uh, continue to leverage all of our great health data for the health system, as well as for uh, growing our sector. So it, it's not uh, it's not a specific part of our strategy. Um, we didn't land that one, um, but we're uh, but, you know, I think as we get into phase two and those uh, getting those discussions started in, in the coming weeks and months that uh, that that will be a very very hot topic it will be one of those uh, one of those things that we're, we're talking about so um i'd say you know it's it's something ontario is really working on uh at the institution level uh at uh in the ministry of health but it wasn't sort of something that the the province was quite ready to come out with uh at sort of a, a strategy level but uh, uh you know i need to always be an optimist and i'm optimist that that phase two that uh, that will be an important thing for us to to, to look at and and, and find ways to communicate what Ontario is going to do about that. That's great. Thanks. Um, so I'm actually going to combine uh, a couple of questions and, and uh, let each of you answer them. So as you're looking forward into the future in terms of what's next for, um, for the life sciences strategies in each of your jurisdictions, and ultimately, what does success look like for you? So, uh, Christina, with a election on the horizon the first part of that question might be tricky for you but I'll, I'll leave it to you to navigate that but maybe ultimate success then yes um well thank you that is true it's a bit difficult for me because we don't have a mandate at, at this this point, had you asked for a week ago, uh, I would probably had a more a clear uh, answer. But I can, what I can say is that um, if you look at the growth rates um, that I uh, just uh, had in my presentation, um, where where can uh, Danish life science um, go if we have the right framework conditions uh, by 2030? Uh, we now know that the single most important challenge is access to talent. That is the single most um, uh, ch uh, um, challenge. And that's both research and also manufacturing level, level. So, and at the same time, we have the same challenge in our, off, uh, on our pub public healthcare system. So that is really um, um, something that we have to, to solve. Um, and that is both for the public sector and also the private sector side uh, and is maybe it is more foreign um, talent uh, and better frame and better conditions uh, and make it more attractive to actually come here and work in Denmark or maybe it is something uh, more groundbreaking in our educational system but there has has to find some answers uh, when I look you know 10 years uh, in in, uh, in the coming years um, so that's the single most important um, framework condition. I, th I think I maybe I'll, I'll uh, stick to that at this point, uh, but um, ho hopefully we'll have another sec uh, session uh, at some point, and then we can talk about if we're going to have another life science strategy. But you, as you said, uh, as you can see, then there will, uh, by the end of 2023, our current strategy will, um, uh, will be out. And of course, we hope there will be another, but of course, it requires a political mandate. Thank, thanks, Christina. And I'm glad you mentioned that uh, that chart as well, too, because it reminded me of um, 
our 2019 Deloitte report where we uh, looked at the projected impacts uh, of a life sciences strategy. And it was a very similar um, chart that we looked at, which really shows that life sciences is a growing sector. Um, it's definitely one that will continue to grow. As you said, even if we do nothing at all, it's going to continue to go along. But there really is an opportunity to accelerate that growth through a more strategic approach. And, and that's really what jurisdictions, that's what these strategies are, are all about. Um, Frank, what about you? What's on the horizon for the life sciences strategy in terms of next steps? And, um, and what does success look like for you? So I guess uh, next steps, uh, I would say that in the very short term, uh, as I said, the strategy is for three years period of time, which is short term, right? So that gives us agility, but also that gives us fragility, if I can say, because, uh, you know, you never know what, what the political situation will be in three years time. So, uh, well, we, we, we kind of know now because we have, <laughs> we're going to have the pretty much the same government for, for the next four years. So that, that, that is kind of a, uh, a positive aspect for the strategy itself. Uh, we can we can expect to have uh, another two, uh, two, three, five years, uh, you know, added to to the current strategy. So that's that's the first uh, element I would say in the short term. Um, the other element I would say is um, we need to have a greater uh, acceptability. Uh, among the, po the population of uh, what we do in the life sciences sector. In other words, we, we need to, and, and in order to do that, actually, we need to involve more uh, the patients and, and the citizens in the innovation processes. Uh, why should we do that? And this is actually one of our, at Montreal in Vivo, this is, this is one, of our, one of our five strategic priorities, but we need to involve them in, in the innovation process, processes to first of all, develop better innovations, because if we have the, the end user involved very early on, uh, ultimately I'm totally convinced we're gonna have better innovations. And two, uh, these people will become ambassadors of our uh, uh, sector because they will better understand what we do, why we do it, and what are the impacts of our sector in the population. And they can talk about that knowledgeably in their own community. So I think that's something that's not that much present in, in our strategy, but it should be there. Um, there's one thing that is present in the strategy. This is around, you know, uh, you know, lowering the carbon footprint of the industry. And that, I think doing that will help also having a greater acceptability for our innovations and in our sector. So that, that, that would be my point. And I guess in terms of what success looks like, I guess, well, first, uh, we have to hit the target of the $4 billion investments, private investments. Uh, going back to the metrics, that's the, the number one metric we should, we should have. But for me, success looks like, um, you know, a greater notoriety, a, a greater uh, a, a knowledge or, or a, a better image also of, of the sector internationally. So, uh, you know, uh, if people talk about licenses, jurisdiction, uh, for me, success would, would mean that they would think immediately of Quebec as, as, as a, a good destination for, you know, licenses investments. Thanks, Frank. Much appreciated. And Andrew, uh, we'll, uh, we'll go to you to wrap things up. Uh, what's on the horizon for the Ontario Life Sciences Strategy and what does success look like? I'll try and combine those. So, so just quickly uh, at the end here. So, I think you know uh, the the first our short term successes is is to launch the things that we said that we do in phase one. So let let let's let's look for those in the coming weeks and months. Uh, the other thing I think that that uh, on the process side is uh, through our commitment to the Life Sciences Council is 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 establishing that uh, that framework for dialogue with the community. Right. And uh, I think that's really important and something that, you know, Jason, that you and, and your organization have advocated for for a long time. And I think that's a, a really, really important um, in terms of the long term success. We've committed uh, Ontario is committed to growing employment as sort of its key metric. You know, we are the Ministry of Job Creation. But picking up on a couple of things Frank said, like like uh, we want to, we want people to think of Canada. And when you think of Canada, you think of uh, Ontario, you think of Quebec, maybe you think of B.C. as well. But uh, but uh, you know you know really that that that's a real success that we that we continue to move up those those global rankings. 
And the other thing that for me is a success, and, and it's sometimes hard to put an exact metric around is we need more Ontario uh, medium and large resilient companies. So these companies that, that, that can be sustainable, have many hundreds of employees, and they may change hands and, and things may happen in the market, but they're anchored here in Ontario and, and we just need more of them. So we need to, we need to support building them through commercialization and, and other things. So, you know, uh, really let's, let's grow our footprint here and, 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 you know, represent Canada and Ontario, Quebec uh, on, on the international stage. Thanks, Andrew. And you, you mentioned the Life Sciences Council that is much anticipated. I hope you won't mind me putting you on the spot. Any any insights into when we can expect to hear? Uh, the insights is that it's much anticipated and uh, you're putting me on the spot. And uh, <laughs> we, yeah, we, we, we fully know that uh, and everyone up and down the chain knows that as well. Great. Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you all very much. Uh, appreciate you attending today and uh, sharing your insights and, and best practices on the life sciences strategy. We're looking forward to continuing this dialogue um, on November 3rd at our policy forum. A couple housekeeping notes on, a, on some upcoming events. Um, again, our Ideas to Action uh, Life Sciences Forum is going to be on November 3rd. If you enjoyed today's conversation, we're going to dive into deeper details at that session. Um, we have a great lineup of speakers talking again about life sciences strategies internationally and, uh, and federally, as well as provincially, um, talking about talent, uh, data we talked about today, investing in life sciences infrastructure, and then actually implementing, turning these ideas into action. Uh, we also have an upcoming breakfast on October 20th. This one's going to be talking about going back to office. So we're all um, uh, trying to manage that right now. So uh, please join us for, uh, for that conversation. And our LSO uh, awards program. Um, nominations uh, have, were, have been extended. They were open until October 3rd. We've now extended that. Uh, timeline. I believe it's uh, it's into November now that uh, that we have those open. But please get your nominations in uh, as soon as possible. And finally, a big thank you to all of our corporate sponsors, our platinum sponsors shown here, our gold sponsors as well as our silver sponsors. We would not be able to host events like this without the support of all of our generous um, uh, sponsors as well as our members. And a special thank you to all of you for attending and to the Danish uh, Life Sciences Forum for partnering with us on delivering uh, today's program. Uh, thank you to all of our speakers and I uh, look forward to seeing you all soon. Have a great day, everyone.